Good evening as we gather for this service of the upper room. Before we begin the service with the prelude and our prayers this evening, we're gonna begin by ringing the bells of our main sanctuary and the chimes of Trinity Chapel, joining with our community as we honor those who are on the front line helping us to live during this coronavirus.
God is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? God, God is the strength of my life. Whom shall I dread? I am seeking your presence, O God. Do not abandon me to my foes. There are people who hate me. There are things that control me. There are places that frighten me. Trust in God. Stand fast and have courage. Help, Help us this night not to fall away. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and give us the courage to withstand. first observance of the Last Supper was filled with mystery and faith and generosity as people gathered in that upper room. This year, as we shelter in place, we too have an opportunity to embody the Last Supper with mystery, with faith, and with hope. Wherever you are watching, you are welcome, and I hope that you have a plate in front of you with bread or a cracker a cup or wine glass with grape juice or wine or water, because during the time of communion, we will ask you to place your hand over those items for a blessing. And we will gather together around tables all around the world as we remember this last night. You may also want to have a candle that can be lighted during the lighting of the candles part of the service and then extinguished at the very end that symbolizes the dark hours ahead as we remember the death of Jesus. This service begins by us celebrating and remembering the light. We remember the time that Jesus spent with his disciples as they celebrated Passover and what we come to know now as the Last Supper. And then we conclude the service with a service of shadows as we begin the journey to the cross. As we gather tonight, I invite you to hear these words from songwriter Phil Porter. Gathered here in the mystery of this hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit, draw near. God be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Gracious, Gracious God, God you give us the sun to illumine the day and the moon and the stars to shine by night. Kindle in us the flame of your love that our lives may shed abroad the radiance of your light and the world may be full of the splendor of your glory through Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness. Amen. Peace. 
Longing for peace, the world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Rise, be your light. Gracious light, pure brightness of the eternal Creator in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now, now as we come, come to the setting of the sun, and, and our eyes behold your vesper light, we sing your praises, holy God, one in Trinity. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Christ of God, giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Let us pray. Spirit, Spirit of Christ, Christ be, be with, with us, us now. We may try to avoid this hour of trouble. trouble. We, we may not stay awake. Help us to face our fear of the cross on which you died. Help us to face the crosses we must carry to honor your life. And let us continue. We, we are, are your disciples, disciples and, and we too follow you with confusion and fear. Strengthen us, we pray, 
so that we may walk through the life into death without fear, through the night into eternal light. Amen. Hear these words of Jesus who said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my, my disciples, if you have love for one another. remember tonight not just the Last Supper or the evening that Jesus spent with his disciples in that upper room, but we remember that Christians have been gathering in homes, in parks, even in the graveyards in order to celebrate this meal. And we remember that Paul the Apostle wrote letters to congregations throughout the places that we now call Greece and Turkey and Macedonia and they were the first remote worship resources because that's where we get the words that we remember this evening as we celebrate communion. 
The communion words that Paul sent to the church in Corinth were these, for I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So I'm going to invite you to place your hands over the bread and the cup that you have in your homes as we have this blessing. We pray, holy God, who always provides. We know you are here and in all our homes and wherever we are as we gather this evening. Bless our bread and bless our cups, reminding us that we are always connected in your body. Your love never lets us go. It's with us now and always. We remember this as we say the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to pick up your bread or your cracker and break it, as we say, through the body of Christ, through this broken bread, we are united with him and with one another. And lifting our cups through this cup of blessing, we remember the new life that Christ gives. These are gifts of God for the people of God. Let us share together wherever we are, reminding ourselves that in the broken bread, we are one in Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we can share the new life in Christ. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed, and they began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. 
And he replied, you have said so. Then Jesus said to them, you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Peter said to him, though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all life for people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world 
just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is the truth. And as you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, For whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed. They spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak. They put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. May we find ways to live in love and to share that love, especially in these days. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be with you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and neither let them be afraid. Mm -hmm. 